How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the next episode. On this part of the series, we're going to actually start going through and grinding inside of the boat. And that includes the transom area. We've been meaning to get to that for quite some time. And I wanted to show you real quick some of the tools that I'm going to be using to complete this part of the project. So you can find these on Amazon. If you try to buy them one at a time, it's going to be kind of pricey. They actually come in a 10 pack. They're made by Nico. You want to go for an 80 grit. Seems to work the best when trying to level out this area here. And obviously you're going to want a good grinder. And then obviously your oscillating tool. As you're going through and grinding, you're going to you're going to find that there's certain spots that you're going to just want to take your oscillating tool and pop it off versus sitting there and grinding. So I have both tools available at your disposal. And that's it. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and suit up. And I'm going to start working on the transom side here. You'll see we still have some residual wood on the back here. We're going to go ahead and pop that uh, old wood off via grinding. Try not to try not to go too crazy with your grinder too by the way because this is actually one of the thinnest parts of the boat so your goal here is to just grind just enough so you can get this wood off and once you've achieved that then go ahead and stop because you'll find out with this grinder especially with your 80 grit you can actually get pretty crazy and you don't want to necessarily grind through if you do you know have some spots that are high or lower than the other it's not a big deal you'll see when we attach the new transom on this we're going to use a certain material that allows for uh, variances in this surface so don't don't worry too much at this point like i said you're going to be just getting in here and and grinding off all these high edges here so when we go ahead and put our new stringers in everything is nice and neat so without further ado i'll go ahead and start grinding and we'll see what it looks like after we get some of the initial grinding done okay one thing to note here is as I was starting to grind on this surface I found some more rotten parts of the wood back there and this is actually the anchor to which you tie off the boat at the bottom and yeah I'm not sure how it was working because you can see the wood was completely rotten. It's three quarter inch. So I got my 916 socket on this and we're just loosening it up. You can also see in the back, I was originally gonna leave that foam in there because it you know, wasn't impeding anything that I needed to, um, to work around. So I said, well, let's just leave it. But once we found out that that piece back there was rotten, it kind of let us know that, hey, we're gonna probably have to remove the foam as well so i can imagine on this side it's probably going to be the same thing as i work on that side next i'll start investigating that a little bit more but this side for sure had a lot of rotten wood back there so that's actually the very far back as you can get in terms of wood so you can kind of see it's it really is truly rotten from one side of the boat forward all the way to the back and you can also see I got these little critters here. I haven't taken a too close of a look and I, I was pulling some of the wood out. It actually kind of looks like there may have been termites in here as well. So yeah, who knows, right? Nothing surprises me at this point. So as we continue on and progress further down into this grinding phase, you can, you can kind of see we started to develop a lot of the white powder along this area. I've, this is where I've kind of ground down some of it and then I ground down some of this edge to kind of smooth it over. You don't want to get too crazy. You just want to allow enough surface area to put your new wood and then also to, to lay it over uh, in terms of your, um, your 1708. Or we may use something else actually and instead of fiberglass. So we're still, still kind of debating that. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and continue removing that 916 bolt. We'll drop that, um, that piece down and then we'll finish grinding up in that area too. <laughs> okay. Well, if it looks really white in here, it's because 
this entire area is just coated in this fiberglass dust. This is why I was talking about earlier why it's so important to have good personal protective gear on because during this phase boy does it get dusty. So you can't tell right now because I haven't dusted it other than like right in that area but what we have now is all the wood all that old residual wood removed from the transom. The only thing I have to do left over in that corner is to just kind of help miter that those rough edges off and then I looked up in that area where if you remember on this side it had rotten wood and that area looks completely encased still I don't see any issues there I'll probably go underneath on the outside of the boat and try to pull on that that little uh, bolt device and see if it's rotten just in case it doesn't look like it is because it, it does seem like it's it's pretty well sealed in there so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and finish removing that excess strands of fiberglass on that corner and then that's gonna call it good well I'm gonna call it good in terms of the transom in general being cleaned up and ready to go now before I start mixing all the new material and cutting the wood out I am going to finish grinding out the rest of the stringers in here you can kind of see there is a lot of dust everywhere and this is only after having worked in the back of the boat imagine what it's going to do after you get um, kind of more towards the stringers done and more towards the front in general so it's going to get pretty pretty dusty in here if you can rather than taking a hose a water hose and spraying it all which is nice and easy it probably would be easier to get a dustpan and a broom and kind of help sweep it up this way it kind of helps with all the excess runoff that goes through that drain hole there so just some ideas anyway I'll go ahead and finish grinding in here and we'll see what it looks like here in a little bit okay so that is it with the transom got that corner ground out real good so what we're gonna do now is I'll probably change out my grinding uh, wheel towards the end you can kind of tell it gets pretty bad and you'll know depending on how hard you're pressing on it it gets pretty hard to uh, start standing so just so you're aware it took me about one grinding wheel to do the entire back I've got a pack of 10 of them so as you can imagine we'll probably end up going through these pretty quick so you're definitely going to want a good surplus of them if you can get a hold of them so because it's so dusty inside the transom area I'm probably going to kind of work a little bit till like here and do this and then these two stringers all the way to the other side for the other two just so I can kind of get out of the dusty area because it does get kind of annoying after a while you have to, you have to actually carry a rag with you and dust your um, you have to dust your mask off like I don't know like probably every 30 seconds it's very annoying so anyway I'll probably just finish grinding just enough and do that one this one this little one over here and then finally this guy and not to not to forget where the uh, the floor goes there so anyway I'll go ahead and continue on here and hopefully you finish grinding here pretty quick okay so we've done some pretty good grinding so far here you can kind of see these edges you'll see a little bit more after i clean it up like a dust broom but the big question is how much do i need a sand and really what it amounts to here is well number one you want to get the wood out any kind of wood that you leave in there as you add in your your new stringers you, you can't have that old wood in there so that old wood definitely has to get removed 
And you'll see there's certain parts that are delaminating. It has a lighter color compared to the darker color in, in general. You want to try to get some of that out. You'll see some strings kind of hanging around. It's not a big deal. That's left over like chop strand. Not a big deal. So anyway, you can kind of see in here that there's still some wood left over. You want to kind of grind that out. But in general here, you'll see like this is a really high, like high level turn here. Some people would grind this whole thing down or kind of make the contour smooth, like, you know, have more of a radius here. You don't have to do that. What you want to look out for, and I saw it kind of towards here, is, see this, see these cracks here? What, what that's from is when they poured the resin in here, they didn't put any reinforcing material like chop strand or fiberglass. And resin by itself is actually very, very weak. And you can see because of its kind of somewhat clear look here is it started cracking. So what you do want to do in these locations is, is you do want to try to spend a good amount of time grinding out these cracks. So when you come back later on, you put in your fiberglass, it's a little bit stronger. You can kind of see this is kind of what you want it to look like. You want it to have this kind of bumpy look because inside of the resin, you have fiberglass. That's, that's what gives it its flex. And that's what gives it the ability to move in and around the water without cracking. This right here, especially in a critical area where your transom is, where your motor is, you can't really have that. So definitely be on the lookout for that. And like I said, also keep an eye out for any kind of residual wood where the stringers are and you want to get that out as well. So that, that's kind of my two cents in terms of how much grinding do you really need to do? And like I said, one thing you don't want to do, I, I've done it before on a prior boat rebuild, is I actually created a radius everywhere. And that takes forever. You're going to go through a lot of extra grinding wheels, and you really don't have to. This one kind of happened to be a, a pretty good radius as it was, but if it does have a perpendicular or a 90 degree turn here, that's not a big deal either because chances are we're going to put the the new stringer in the same location. We just want to make sure, like I said, once again, no wood from the old stringer should be left. You can see how dusty it is. So this is where my camera was and I'm currently on grinder wheel number three. And what we've done so far is we made it all the way to where the front of the motor goes. And I started sanding down the bulkhead. You can kind of see here, this is what we're looking for. Nice, tr uh, smooth transition. Not trying to go crazy. There's also some gel coat. You'll see a better look when I get this all cleaned up. But you do want to sand a good amount away, probably like maybe two to three inches away from the gel coat, just to give enough of our um, 1708 room to stick and we're not coating over the gel coat. So about two to three inches should be good enough. And it looks like for today, I'll be able to get should be at the whole bilge area should be pretty well sanded down which amounts to roughly about four feet in maybe four to eight hours so allow a good solid two days to sand everything down and yeah i know it's a lot of work but this is what you're uh what you're getting yourself into you can see some of my footprint uh, uh one of my footprints right there Tons of dust, tons of dust everywhere. So definitely save this part to the very last. Make sure all your equipment is out of the boat. And even some of the stuff outside, you'll see when you get out, is kind of coated in the fiberglass dust as well. So on that note, we'll go ahead and conclude the video for today. And like I said, when we 
start up again tomorrow. I will go ahead and show you what everything looks like after it's all been, I'm gonna use a broom actually. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and dust uh, all this stuff out of here with a broom. So hopefully we can get most of it out. I'm trying to avoid using the hose just because I know how much of this will just run off into the yard and it doesn't exactly break down very well. Anyway, well, I hope you liked the video. If you're interested in seeing more on the series, don't forget to subscribe. Leave some comments. If you have any questions or anything, I'll be happy to help you out. As always, we'll catch you on the next episode. Have a good one.